So reduced sit trial is a cardiovascular outcome trial for primary prevention, patients with diabetes who don't have c known cardiac disease, but they have risk factors for cardiac disease. And that was 30% of the study, and 70% of the patients already had an atherosclerotic event, either an MI or a stroke or some other atherosclerotic event. So to get into the study, you had to have high triglycerides over 135, which isn't that high, but still elevated. Um, you had to have uh, be on a statin, so you were already on standard of care in terms of cardiac protection with a statin with an LDL that was below 100, it had to be 40 to 99. And, uh, and that's basically got you into the study. What's so interesting to me as an endocrinologist and to my peers is you could have diabetes and a risk factor, diabetes and hypertension, diabetes in being a male over 55 or a female over 65, or diabetes in a low HDL or diabetes in smoking. So, you got it. so basically these patients were in front of us every day when we were practicing. So of the patients with heart disease who got in, many of those had diabetes. So overall, the study had about 58% of patients with diabetes and 30% um, diabetes and risk factors, 70% cardiac disease, but they could have had diabetes. So that was the setup of the study. But what your buy-in to the study was is you had to have a triglyceride over 135 as a signal of additional cardiac risk. The reason that's a signal is previous studies have shown if your triglycerides are elevated, you are at higher cardiac risk. The importance of the study is no other drug ever showed that by adding it to patients with high triglycerides, there was cardiac benefit. So the other two big drugs that have been tested in the past, niacin and fibric acid, had, did not have positive outcomes. So going into the study, the hope would be it'd be positive, but it was uh, uncharted territory. Other omega-3 studies also did not show cardiac benefit. So the bottom line of the study, the study was continued about six years. There were about almost about 8,000-something patients, half on the Vasipa and half on placebo. And the bottom line is that the primary endpoint, which was lowering non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, cardiac death, revascularization, or unstable angina hospitalization, went down 25%. That was the primary endpoint. That was announced before last November. At the heart meetings last November, Dr. Bott from Brigham and Women's Hospital, who's the lead author, um, they announced the other data, 26% lowering of what's called hard MACE, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke and death. And each separate outcome, non-fatal MI went down 31%, stroke went down 28%, and cardiovascular death down 20%. So it's so unique about the study, not only was it a positive study, but each specific endpoint in itself drove the outcome. Each one was statistically significant, as was the overall outcome. In terms of side effects, uh, the side effects, there were three that were uh, more than placebo. Some edema, peripheral edema without heart failure, some m mild constipation, and there were a higher rate of hospitalization for atrial fib, but there was a lower rate of stroke. So the atrial fib was there, unknown why, but it did not lead to stroke. There were less strokes by 28% in the Vasipa group. So that's pretty much what the study showed. In terms of impact to us as a prescribing physician, we see patients with diabetes every day with risk factors, and the triglycerides is often ignored. And now, looking at the triglycerides, you're going to do something about it. It's an obligation to say, look, I want to lower my patient's MI stroke death, give Vesipa, not a dietary supplement fish oil, and not any of the other drugs that lower triglycerides. They have not been shown to have benefit, but this shows very compelling evidence that it's very beneficial. I think with the data the way it is, the American Diabetes Association has already authorized it as standard of care, even before it goes to the FDA in September to give its final blessing. But the paper came out in November. Uh, and the no, it was announced in November. The New England Journal lead article in January, it was felt to be the most important cardiology article of the year for all of last year. In March, at the heart meetings, they announced that total events, not just first event, went down 30%. So for those you had a stroke and you lived, it still prevented the MI or other things like that. So total events went down. And uh, my, if I had a guess, I can't see why they wouldn't approve it with such striking data with each individual endpoint, MI and stroke and death and the, and the five-point um, 
mace as well. So, so I hope it would be approved, and I hope that my colleagues would do what I'm doing after seeing the data. I'm, I'm looking at triglycerides as an obligation to get uh, to, to utilize the drug.